My name is Art Haynes. I'm a, a mechanical designer. I have a company in Norwich called Farm Art Tools, and we make hand tools for small farms that we sell through Johnny's Selected Seeds. I used to live in New Hampshire, but I moved to Maine uh, five years ago and um, wanted to try country living. And New, Southern New Hampshire was getting way too busy and hectic, so I came to Central Maine and uh, bought a farmhouse. Um, and uh, really, really enjoyed the slower pace of life. It, it definitely is, uh, it definitely is slower. People take the time to uh, talk to you or give you service at the at the stores, and uh, it's it's, uh, it's it's nice. Back in November, I had. This, I had this idea I wanted to build a solar-powered electric car for a hobby. And uh, in previous years, I worked on the first program, which is a, a program with high school students to build robots. I did that down in uh, Massachusetts. And so, and I'm also a member of the Grange in uh, Norwich Walk, and we like to do public service, uh, community service projects. And so one considered community service project we wanted to do was education. So I just proposed it to the Grange and they thought it was a good idea. I proposed building a solar car. And so we drew up a set of flip charts and took them up to the high school. And uh, we talked to uh, Ira Luffing's class and uh, he said they'd be interested in doing it. And uh, so we got a about eight high school students from a study hall and uh, we met in January we started the project in the first couple weeks uh, we tried to come up with the specifications of the car and these are the specifications the students came up with that it would carry two people to go 25 to 30 miles per hour and have a two-speed transmission so go up hills have windows a seat a roof windshield wipers brakes a range of 15 to 20 miles, a voltage gauge, a heater, radio. Then we had to decide how big it was going to be. So we got uh, two of the largest students and we set them on a bench side by side and two largest students was 48 inches. We thought that was too wide so we took a large student and a small student and we came up with 40 inches wide and that's what the car right now is. The cab is 40 inches inside. This is the top view of the people. And then we decided how high the roof had to be. It was a 16-inch seat and 52 inches headroom. Then we went 8 inches above that, so you wouldn't bump your head. And then the length of the car, uh, we just drew in the diameter of the wheels, 26-inch diameter wheels, and measured it out. And we figured we had to be 84 inches long. And the top of the car was 60 inches. And this is this is actually how the car turned out. And then I just drew it up on the computer. This this is a, a drawing of the uh, chassis of the car with the wheels on it and uh, uh, you can rotate it around and look at it and uh, what you do is you decide what you want it to draw and you draw it in the 3D we call it 3D solids and uh, I'll give you an example I, uh, there's the transmission there and you can take the car apart and put it together. Like I took the body off the car, but I can, here's the seat. I can put that back in. Here's the seat. Here's the frame of the car. See? I can zoom in and look at it. And here's the uh, body. And here's the door. the solar panel in the front. So. And then we uh, made a cardboard model of the car, and this is a cardboard model, just to get an idea what it might look like. And that was, this is our first model. And uh, uh, after a while we thought about it, 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 look, it didn't look attractive. So then we decided to make it look more like a, a Hummer. That's why it looks like it does now, Hummer Jeep, a more design that people are used to seeing. And that's why it looks the way it did. And a good, good uh, offshoot of that gave us a place for the front solar panel. 
the students came out to the shop, and I have a machine shop uh, with milling machines and drill presses, and uh, uh, the students, uh, each, each uh, group made some parts for the car. Uh, they programmed the parts on the numerical milling machine and actually made them. And uh, they got exposure to some uh, computer-controlled machines and manufacturing. Um, I think the students, they learned, they learned a lot of stuff that they didn't know they were learning, uh, just about how you conceive something uh, how it goes together, how there's problems that need to be solved when you put it together, and, uh, and uh, an excitement of seeing something that you conceived and created go together. And uh, at the beginning, the students weren't involved, weren't as it were in a team, but by the end, uh, the students seemed to take ownership of the car and they felt like it, that that was something that uh, they were part of and, and contributed to uh, every one of the students. At first the students didn't quite uh, know what this was all about and I think a lot of them signed up just to get out of study hall. But the more they got into it, the more excited they got. And uh, out of the, all the students that signed up for it originally uh, stuck with the project even though it was a volunteer project uh, because of the enthusiasm did uh, continue out throughout the project, and uh, we each I met twice a week and uh, make the parts and would bring them in and assemble them uh, at the school, and uh, it, and we worked with a solar panel outside and, and learned how to hook it up ahead of time so we we got all that behind us. What this solar car does is demonstrates an, another way of powering cars besides gasoline and in the future in, in the future to have other methods people have to uh, accept them and also be exposed to different uh, m methods of uh, you know powering the cars and I think that's we got to we've demonstrated that there is other ways to do it that actually work and if people actually see that in real life uh, then it opens up their minds that uh, yeah, there is other there is other things that can be done and, and will be done in the future. That's why I I didn't that's why I started from the ground up. I didn't convert a golf cart because you're stuck with their setup, which is set up for the golf course. We went lighter, and also it's fun to build to create something from scratch. Ah, uh, can we have? I'll have an original Whopper meal. And that's what created the enthusiasm from the students was we did create it exactly from scratch. We didn't convert. Converting a golf cart would not have been that much fun. It's the first time we ran it at night. It looks pretty good. Except the, I start to see the batteries getting a little bit low. It's down to 11 and a half volts. You can't really run less than 11 volts. We'll have to wait till tomorrow before it charges back up again. I've been taken around to parades because uh, it's been really enjoyable taking it to the parades because of the, uh, the response from the, the people who see it. And I, and, uh, I like showing people how it works. Uh, so that's why I go to the parades. Uh, I think it's also good good for the community to, uh, uh, to be out there to, to show people that we're, there's some new exciting stuff happening. So now we have it running and, and we're, we're, now we're trying to see if it has any use to myself or anybody. Um, uh, you know, time will tell as we try it and see if we can use it for utility, utilitarian vehicles. I plan on, I live three miles from Madison, and Madison uh, has a grocery store, hardware store, and post office, and a recycling center, so I should be able to go to Madison and back in that car uh, without spending any uh, gasoline money. It's, it's, been, it's been a practical uh, car to do that. It takes a little bit longer than driving, uh, 
maybe takes me uh, 20 minutes each way to take the solar car, but uh, for the to drive it's 10 to 15 minutes, so it isn't that much longer. We're going up to uh, Madison, uh, uh, the closest uh, commercial area to my house. You'll have lunch at the uh, Subway restaurant. The total trip, it's uh, three miles each way. And all the roads have speed limit of less than 35 miles per hour. The majority of them is this uh, country road, this dirt road. I have it in low gear right now. The car has two-speed transmission. Uh, electric cars go very well on level. Uh, they have a little hard time with hills. Uh, it's struggling to make it up the hill, but uh, we will make it. Uh, it takes a lot of work to lift this much weight up, up a hill. People have seen the car when I've had it on the street have gotten all positive response. Uh, everybody's very interested in uh, what we're doing here and uh, uh, they think it's uh, you know worthwhile. Probably a uh, few more improvements on this. It needs a better transmission and it needs reverse. Probably need a little more battery uh, storage to get a little more range out of it. Well, no need to stop here. <laughs> Don't need, need to stop at the gas station. Oh, I'm really pleased with it, and uh, I, I, it's doing what I wanted it to do, and that's to be able to go uh, from my house to Madison and back, and, uh, and it does it at a reasonable speed, and it's actually uh, had, the car has utility. Everybody who gets, every time you see somebody ride in it, they have a smile on their face. <laughs> uh.